เขาเรียนเชิญสปิเกอร์คนต่อไปคือดรโจแคนชอนะครับตำแหน่งเป็นซีเนียร์ดีเลกเตอร์ออฟเทคนิคอลเซอร์วิสของบริษัท ABC นะครับท่านทำงานเกี่ยวกับด้านเทคนิคอลเซอร์วิสเซอร์ให้กับทางลูกค้าเราทางฟีดและก็ดิจิชันนะครับแล้วก็เป็นท่านคนทําเรื่องรีเสิร์ชทางด้านแอปพลิเคชันหรือการใช้พลาสมาในในอาหารสัตว์ในแต่ละแต่ละสปีชีนะครับปัจจุบันท่านทํางานท่านนี้มาอย่างน้อยไม่ต่ำกว่า35ปีในอินดัสทรีนี้แล้วก็เป็นอาจารย์สอนในมหาลัยหลายๆที่นะครับนะครับแล้วก็ล่าสุดก็มาตำรวจตำแหน่งเป็นเซเนียร์ดีเลกเตอร์ออฟเทคนิคอลเซอร์วิสของ ABC ครับดรแคนโจแคนชอปิสทีวบอตอรัตเอ็ปเชียร์ทีอินโทรดักชันและขอบคุณทุกคนที่อยู่กับเราและขอบคุณสำหรับการเชิญชวนที่ผ่านมาของท่านดรแคมปีแคมปีและท่านดรยามบินขอบคุณที่แชร์ข้อมูลที่เขาแชร์เป็นการแสดงผลที่ดีที่สุดสำหรับการแสดงผลที่ดีที่สุดสำหรับการแสดงผลที่ดีที่สุดสำหรับการแสดงผลที่ Uh, strategies to build sow endurance for the long-term production uh, in uh, Asia region, particularly uh, where uh, African swine fever has been endemic for a couple of years now, and uh, a few countries uh, uh, people have had to resort to using uh, uh, terminal uh, line. Uh, Finishing gilts to turn them into sows, as well as uh, you know, uh, trying to rebuild the herd and trying to save as many pigs as possible or produce more pigs to replenish the pork supply. And uh, so, I want to focus a little bit on uh, what the sow is telling us in terms of uh, what that sow needs and what that sow goes through. Uh, during uh, gestation, lactation, and under various uh, disease situations, and the stress that's associated with that. So, if we look at USA uh, production records, uh, what's the sow telling us? Uh, these are uh, recent records uh, representing close to three million sows in the U.S. Uh, And what we see in these production records is a very high variation within farm and across production systems. A lot of variability in production uh, uh, metrics. Uh, season and sow parity uh, does affect have a, a impact, a significant impact on uniformity of production. Uh, one thing that we are seeing in the U.S., particularly as we've increased. Uh, A litter size in sows due to uh, more modern genetics. Over the past 10 years or so, we've gone from roughly 6% average sow mortality up to 14%. And about 60% of that sow mortality is uh, occurring around the transition period. And another tidbit that I think that come out of uh, this is If your sow farm is having high mortality, that tends to carry through all the way to from weaning to finishing, uh, all the way to market. And so, even in regions where we don't have ASF in in the U.S., we're still struggling with uh, produ <coughs> production of the sow. And I think it's very important that we. Think about ways that we can help nutritionally help try to manage through some of these issues. Uh, historically, uh, we have used plasma proteins in pig diets. Uh, we've been using them for over 35 years, and it's typically used in the creep feed or uh, or in for at least two weeks after weaning to help pigs transition through that weaning stress. Uh, situation after weaning, and if you look at weighted averages of multiple university studies uh, comparing plasma versus some other uh, protein source, you typically will see a greater average daily gain of about 31 percent, higher feed intake of about 25 percent, and a modest improvement in feed conversion ratio. Through that first two weeks post weaning, 
Uh, we've also done uh, research over the years looking at the impact of plasma in sow diets. And uh, typically we're, we're going to be feeding about uh, five kilos of plasma per metric ton in the feed. Uh, and typically what we see is uh, increased feed intake in young sows, younger parity sows, but somewhat lower in older sows. Uh, but we also still see, regardless of parity, heavier pigs at weaning, uh, increased pig survival, uh, more what we call full value pigs at weaning, better quality pigs at weaning, uh, and improved farin rate to the next litter. Uh, and also we see a reduction in repeat matings needed. And I'll share some of the key uh, results of some past research that we've uh, done uh, at APC. Uh, I think uh, one example is a, a study where we used a 5,500 sow herd that had a chronic history of PERS virus uh, and it was a very unstable herd. Uh, we fed uh, plasma at five kilos uh, per metric ton in both gestation and lactation feed uh, for uh, a whole year at this farm. And so then we took uh, their historical production records uh, before feeding plasma for one year back uh, and then one year forward after feeding plasma and looked at statistical process control analysis uh, to, uh, to uh, understand changes in the production records and systems. And so what we saw was uh, that uh, plasma in the sow herd feed uh, improved uh, weekly farin rate uh, from 81% to, to 85% or, or 86% uh, reduced repeat matings uh, from 11 to 7.8% and produce 0.4 more pigs per sow mated per week of production. So to put that in a perspective, uh, after they've been on plasma, uh, this sow herd was producing over 400 more pigs per week per mated sow uh, in this production system. So they uh, adapted use of, of plasma uh, in this chronic uh, PERS herd. Uh, some other work we've looked at uh, in, in a very high health status herd, this would be a PERS negative herd. Uh, uh, what we did in this study, uh, they were moving, uh, uh, had sows in a uh, large, in, in during gestation in uh, large uh, pens with uh, uh, individualized computerized feeders. And the sows would, uh, when they first introduced that, the sows would fight and they would have uh, a uh, reduction in, in farin rate. Uh, so we went in to that unit and uh, based on some of our past research, we said, let's look at uh, feeding plasma just in gestation from day uh, 14 of gestation through the day of farrowing. And then we just fed them uh, no plasma in their lactation feed. Uh, and we didn't see any difference at, uh, at the end in farrowing rate, uh, both groups ended up having a pretty high farin rate, over 92%, uh, wasn't significantly different. But uh, when we did a very controlled individual body weight, so pigs uh, at birth as well as at day 18 of age, we saw in the parity one sows and all across all sows, a very significant increase in uh, body weight of these pigs. Uh, when they were fed plasma, uh, when the sows had been fed plasma in gestation, the pigs were not uh, offered any creep feed. And again, the sows did not have plasma in the feed during lactation. So the result was also that we saw more full value pigs weaned uh, per litter. This would be pigs that weigh at least 
three and a half kilos at 18 days of age. Uh, and also across all parity, we saw about 0.3 more pigs weaned. So this indicated to us that uh, feeding even high health status sows, uh, plasma in the gestation feed had a longer term effect on how uh, these pigs developed and, and performed as suckling uh, pigs up to weaning. We've also done uh, several uh, lactation studies where we only feed uh, a half a percent plasma in the, uh, uh, or five kilos uh, per kilo, five kilograms of plasma per ton of feed in the, just in the lactation feed alone. And uh, this is a, a weighted average summary of five studies. Uh, and we segregated out the data that showed highly significant differences between the control and plasma fed group. Uh, this represents roughly 2,700 sows. Uh, and what we saw uh, in parity one and two sows, we saw a significant increase in feed intake uh, through 18 days uh, of lactation. Uh, at that time, we were weaning sows around 18 days. Uh, we also saw a significant reduction in wean to estrus interval in the parity one sows, as well as in the parity one sows, uh, significant increase in percentage of those uh, gilts that uh, came into estrus day four to six post weaning. Uh, which is a very good target to try to achieve uh, uh, in a production system. Uh, most people would like to get them up above 70%. We also followed the, even in multi pair of cells, uh, we followed the uh, fed them plasma only in the first, like in their first lactation and followed them to the next litter. And we saw a significant increase in subsequent farin rate. Uh, of sows uh, that had previously been fed plasma in their earlier lactation. And consistently across all parity groups, uh, we see an increase in litter weight and average pig weight at weaning uh, with more full value pigs weaned per litter. So uh, using uh, US uh, uh, economics, uh, feed cost and uh, uh, facility costs, et cetera, fixed costs. Uh, we netted about $1.77 uh, value per wean pig uh, uh, by feeding uh, after the cost of feeding plasma at, at five kilos per metric ton in the feed. Uh, now, we, we've, uh, we presented some of this past information to an advisory group in Europe and uh, uh, talked to them about uh, focusing in on feeding plasma during that peripartum period or transition period of uh, very high stress. Uh, in late gestation, uh, at cell, uh, especially these highly prolific cells, uh, are undergoing rapid uh, fetal and mammary growth, uh, rapidly changing uh, metabolic and hormone profiles, profiles near farin time. And uh, with larger litter size, uh, farin duration is extended. Uh, it's a very uh, high energy expenditure occurring right around this time. Uh, of course, again, more shifts in hormone uh, profiles uh, that uh, really, uh, uh, you know, put that sow <coughs> under under uh, a really high stress condition. Uh, and so in early lactation, that sow is producing colostrum and gearing up to produce milk. And uh, both the body and the, the uterus has to recover uh, during that early lactation period, uh, you know, to get that cell pre prepped for uh, a subsequent uh, reproduction cycle. So transition feeding uh, could provide a, a more precise targeted use of 
select ingredients or additives that have potential to support sales during this critical period of stress, a very high stress. So we really want to uh, consider using a transition feed to prepare that sow for a consistent high feed intake during lactation uh, to support the, uh, the large litter sizes, uh, but also hopefully uh, prepare uh, that sow to have uh, better recovery of the body and uterus uh, to, to improve longer term reproduction and potentially lifetime productivity per sow in terms of litter size. So objectives uh, uh, of this study, uh, a new study we just published in uh, Porcine Health Management uh, this year, uh, was to determine the effects of 0.5 zero, uh, 0 or 2.5% or plasma in the transition diet during uh, on sow and motor performance uh, during their initial fairing. And so uh, the other objectives were to kind of look zero in on uh, right before and right after fairing uh, while those transition diets were being fed to take a look at what's going on with uh, serum cytokines and oxidation status markers. And then we wanted to follow those cells to the next litter uh, to see if there were longer term effects of feeding those transition diets uh, during the, only during that initial fairing uh, on subsequent litter sites. And so we had about 452 sows in the study. They were 65% of them were, were first and second litter sows uh, at a commercial farm in Spain. Uh, and these transition diets were fed at three kilos per sow per day from entry uh, to fairing, which was about a 6.1 day average and 4.5 kilograms uh, per sow per day, uh, one to day five of lactation uh, during only that uh, initial parturition. So a total of 11 days uh, of eating those transition diets. So these, uh, uh, then after feeding that transition diet, they were all fed a common lactation diet uh, from day six to weaning. The average wean roughly 24 days and had a common gestation diet uh, fed to the next litter. Uh, we also, uh, again, uh, sampled uh, uh, some sows uh, two days before and four days after fairing uh, for a serum analysis and uh, uh, kept up with the sow breeding uh, to next litter size production information. And the type of diets we were feeding, uh, uh, in Europe, uh, typical uh, type European diets with barley, corn, wheat, wheat bran, uh, soybean meal. Uh, and again, these are transition diets, so they're focused more on uh, a little bit higher uh, fiber and uh, uh, type diets uh, and uh, relatively low energy, uh, 2100 uh, kcals net energy and relatively low lysine, about 0.67% lysine. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we use the zero, a half, or two and a half percent plasma uh, in the three experimental diets. Uh, if we look at the results of the initial fairing while the plasma was being used in the transition feed, uh, what we saw that it was uh, of key importance was uh, that uh, sows fed plasma had both a significantly lower number of stillborn pigs per litter as well as percentage of stillborn pigs per litter. Uh, and this was highly, uh, you know, significant uh, effect. Uh, and even though we're only feeding the plasma just the, the approximately six days before the sows fed, it appeared, uh, regardless of level we used, it appeared to 
reduce uh, percentage of stillborn pigs as well as number of stillborn pigs per litter. This is important in terms of uh, having more opportunity pigs to, to get to market. Uh, when we look at both prepartum and postpartum serum oxidation status markers of these sows uh, fed plasma in a transition feed, uh, sows fed plasma had higher uh, serum uh, glutathione peroxidase activity, which is a uh, indicating a, a better antioxidation status. And this was uh, a very uh, highly significant linear effect, both two days before and four days after fairing. Uh, very consistent uh, response here uh, on uh, that. So it appears feeding plasma can help uh, reduce some of the oxidative uh, stress occurring in that cell around parturition. Uh, other information uh, related to initial fairing, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, we were not able to record the lactation feed intake at this commercial farm. Uh, another unfortunate event was that uh, uh, litter integrity by transition diet was not, main, they were not able to maintain that uh, after cross fostering. Uh, so, uh, wean, weaning pig data uh, was confounded and, and therefore we could not report this. Uh, the other oxidation status markers such as uh, uh, your inflammatory cytokines were not significantly affected by transition diet, uh, but there were some interesting trends. Uh, one other key point is, uh, although not statistically different, uh, uh, we did see a kind of a uh, linear reduction in back, fast, back fat loss on sows fed uh, uh, higher levels of plasma. Uh, and this was back fat loss was from uh, measured from entry into gestation and or fairing and uh, at weaning on these sows. Uh, I wanted to point out uh, there is some past work uh, we had done using a, a pregnant mouse model uh, published in Journal of Animal Science. And in this study, uh, we were uh, bringing uh, plug positive uh, pregnant mice uh, from uh, the state of Maine, flying them to uh, University of Illinois. Uh, and uh, what we saw was that transport stress uh, reduced pregnancy rate uh, to a very low level. Uh, and we put these mice on, on uh, different diets. And uh, we found if they were fed plasma, we had uh, either one or even up to 8% plasma in the diet. Uh, we, we, we had observed that uh, uh, we were having uh, a much more normal uh, pregnancy rate uh, versus control, highly diff significant difference. Of the mice, uh, 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 one of the things we did is uh, we went in and measured uh, pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines in the uterine tissue of these mice uh, starting at gestation day three is when they actually started on the plasma and even within one day, either one or 8% plasma significantly reduced uh, the pro-inflammatory cytokine TNF-alpha, as well as interferon gamma, and uh, significantly increased uh, uh, anti-inflammatory cytokine uh, TGF-beta-1. So this is clearly indicating that uh, a plasma can help maintain pregnancy and uh, modulate uh, the uh, uterine cyc uh, cytokine profile uh, even at the tissue level, meaning that plasma is a very potent immune modulator 
And that works across all systems, not just at the gut, but also uh, in the uterine tissue as well. So it's a systemic type uh, of an effect. So if we go ahead and look at results to the next litter, uh, this is, again, we only fed plasma in that previous lactation, just in that transition feed, so a short time period. Uh, across all cells, all parity cells, uh, we uh, tended to see a kind of a reduction in wean to vinyl service interval as plasma level increased, though not significant, nor did we see any significant effect on percent of cells that fared their next litter when we look at all parity cells. However, if we look and if we look at uh, total born litter size or live born uh, per litter, uh, even though we saw some numerical increases, uh, uh, there was not a, a treatment effect, but there was a diet by parity interaction uh, going on here. And uh, so we separated the data out and looked and only the young cells, the parity one and two cells. Uh, and so this is the data of, uh, of litter size for young cells previously fed plasma in the transition feed only. Uh, and when we look at only the young cell population, which was about 65% of the cells in that study, uh, we saw a very, uh, significant linear increase in both total born and live born per litter as we increase uh, plasma in that transition feed. Uh, and this was a long-term effect on their next uh, parturition. And if we calculate the change of, of litter, litter size from previous to next litter, uh, what we see is a almost a one to 2.5 increase in litter size change for cells fed plasma versus control. And this was true also uh, for live born litter size change. Uh, so even a half percent fed back in that previous uh, transition feed of the previous cycle resulted in producing you know, 0.66, uh, about 0.4 more pigs uh, uh, per, per litter, and 2.5% plasma brought it up to a little bit over two pigs per litter. Uh, so in, in summary, uh, plasma in transition sow feed uh, reduced both the percentage and number of stillborn pigs. Uh, it also uh, increased uh, serum glutathione peroxidase activity, indicating an improved antioxidation status, or again, reduced potential damage caused by oxidation. Uh, and uh, it had a longer term effect, uh, particularly in young cells, for having uh, increased in subsequent litter size. Uh, there was no significant effect on, of litter size of the in the next litter on mature cells. So we conclude that strategic use of plasma in, in transition feed uh, may have merit for reducing stillborn pigs, as well as have longer term beneficial effects on litter size in the next parturition of, of the parity one and parity two cell, uh, which uh, should indicate uh, longer term uh, potential for uh, better lifetime productivity in sows as well. Uh, because most people, if you call a parity one or parity two sow, it's, uh, it's not because of lameness or other issues, it's often because of low litter size. Uh, so uh, we think this uh, effect uh, uh, both uh, beneficial effect on stillborn and subsequent litter size response to plasma was probably linked to the better oxidation status uh, of the cells around fairing time. 
And so if you kind of, again, step back and look at the big picture of uh, some of our historical work of uh, using uh, plasma in sow feed, uh, uh, we pretty consistently see uh, about 0.4 more pigs weaned per litter. Uh, whether you're feeding it in gestation and lactation during a PERS challenge or PERS uh, situation, uh, or just feeding it in, in lactation feed or just feeding it in gestation feed, uh, we see this pretty consistently. And in the newest data, looking at transition feed, uh, uh, certainly uh, that short-term feeding uh, in the transition period, uh, uh, would even 0.5% would uh, reduce stillborn pigs per litter, about 0.4. But if you're looking for the longer term effect on subsequent litter size, uh, we'd probably recommend that two and a half percent uh, to get up to this point two or two two more born alive next litter uh, to, to get the maximum value out of, out of the response. With that, uh, um, thank you and I appreciate again everyone for, for joining us today. And uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, turn it back over to Wat Rarat and uh, hope to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cho, for your presentation. Okay. Uh, I'll just ask you one more time. The data that Dr. Cho gave us in the form of the cow, is quite important. In the current day, we find that we use the cow that has the highest quality, which is called high-polyphic cow. It is a state of being able to be able to create it. Plasma protein can help us in the form of the cow that helps us in the form of the cow that helps us in the form of the cow. นะครับเพื่อลดปัญหาลดสเตนโดยเฉพาะยิ่งในกลุ่มแม่หมูสาวแม่หมูยุ่นน้อยเนี่ยมีความจำเป็นที่เข้าไปช่วยลดสเตนและเพิ่มผลผลิตในส่วนตรงนั้นนะครับซึ่งจากข้อมูลที่ได้มาเราพบเห็นว่าสามารถเพิ่มจํานวนปริมาณลูกต่อแม่ต่อคอกได้เพิ่มขึ้นนะครับแล้วก็ช่วยเรื่องของสุขภาพแม่สุกรที่ดีแล้วก็กลับไปเป็นสัตว์ได้เร็วขึ้นแล้วก็พาราตี้ต่อไปก็ยังมีโปรดักชันที่ดีนั่นเองนะครับ